everyone and welcome to worship today. Everyone turn to the person next to you and say, it's so good to see you, Nathan. It's so good to see you. That's right. That's right. So good to see you, neighbor. Well, my name is Pastor Chris. On behalf of everyone here at St. Joe Church, we welcome you to our worship service today. Uh, if this is your first time guest, feel free to fill out some of the connection uh, cards. Uh, they're sometimes in the pews or on the tables over there. Or if you are online today, we welcome you to our service today. We have a special service today. We have a few baptisms and we're taking communion. So this is a special Sunday and we welcome you here today. Our church is committed to having a good Christmas Eve service. Who here, let's take a show of hands. Who here loves Christmas? All right, all right, let's take another show. Who here has their Christmas tree set up already? Okay, you are some Christmas Eve loves, I guess. So our church is committed to Christmas, which means that we also have a variety of Christmas Eve services. Now we know sometimes, depending on your, your style, maybe you have the presents opened up the night of or the night of morning of or you have all sorts of activities but don't worry we have several services on christmas eve so if you turn to your bulletin just want to get your attention on that we have different times for this um christmas eve we have a four o'clock at the ymca we have a seven o'clock here at saint joe we have an 11 o'clock also here at saint joe who here likes the candlelit evening service the classic service oh that's right that's right come here to saint joe you will love it, we assure you. We have a good service today. I'm excited to be here. Pastor Glenn's going to be giving a good sermon. We're going to have some baptisms and communion. But of course, we start with our key three announcements. So before we have that, turn the person next to you again and say, how was your Thanksgiving? And we'll roll with the key three announcements. <laughs> excited to share that on December the 9th at 5 o'clock p.m. Mary McDonald the composer who did our Carnegie Hall cantata will be in the house doing a recital concert we are so excited to invite everyone to come ask your friends your family your neighbors to come to this free concert it will be one hour long it will be piano it will be organ it will be vocal and it will be the beautiful sounds of the Christmas season she will be joined by our own Dr. Jonathan Young, which is way cool. Yeah. And then on Sunday morning, December the 10th at 9 and 11, here in the sanctuary, Mary McDonald will be back with us to conduct Festival of Christmas. It is the cantata that the Chancel Choir sang in New York City last year. We will have a full orchestra, a nice big choir. We are so excited to present 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock. Right here. Oh, I'm so excited. It's going to be a great weekend. It will be awesome. That's so great. A couple other things to um, bring to your attention is that we are doing the Angel Tree, both here at St. Joe and at St. Joe at the Y. But here at St. Joe, y'all picked up all of the angels. And so that's amazing. But we're still going to take some donations, um, monetary donations for gift cards. So you can make that donation at St. Joe at the Y. The Angel Tree is out in the lobby. Go get yourself an angel. The next thing that's coming up is on December 2nd, Faith in Motion is having their dance recital right here where we're awesome, standing. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, and that's at 3.30. Come out and watch all the um, amazing performances that the girls and boys have been working on. Last but certainly not least is all of just the, all of the Christmas stuff that is going on. Some of we talked about already, but hey, just stick around for this next Christmas video and you can hear all about it. St. Joe. And St. Joe's alive. <coughs> the holidays are coming. Now can I take off the stupid hat? You can, but the holidays are going to come anyway, so. <laughs> what a relief. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we are here to tell you all about the holidays, all of the Christmas things are coming. We have postcards, and they tell you all about the things that are coming up with the holidays and Advent season, things like the Christmas cantata, a Mary McDonald Christmas concert, jingle jam, a movie party, all of the things 
and it all culminates in Christmas Eve, and we cannot wait to have you. But you gotta take postcards, right, Glenn? All the information's here, everything they need. But it's not just for you. It's for your friends, your relatives, your acquaintances, your neighbors, and your colleagues. We have 1,000 of these little puppies to pass out all over the city of Fort Wayne to all of those friends and relatives, acquaintances, neighbors, and colleagues. A thousand postcards to invite people to Advent and Christmas activities, no matter what they might be. Everybody is welcome at both campuses, no matter where you normally worship, at all those events. And 1,000 postcards are ready to go out in invitation in this season. And you know what? They can do that. They can. They've done it before. This fall, we had 1,000 postcards for the new services as we rolled out the classic, the canvas, and worship at St. Joe at the Y and talking about Level Up. And you all distributed 1,000 postcards to your friends and neighbors. You can do it now. I hope you're getting excited because uh, whether we all like it or not, Christmas time is coming. And really, I can hardly wait. Me too. Bye-bye. We sing our first song, Living Here.
at this time forward uh, a couple little girls for baptism. We want to invite Lily and Olivia and their families forward and uh, we're going to join together in prayer for them and in the liturgy of baptism and then baptism. And so what I want to ask is um, Jake and Jackie and baby Olivia and Amanda and Gavin and baby Lily, little Lily, come <laughs> forward. <laughs> She's getting very, growing up very quickly. Uh, I feel like she's grown up the last few weeks. I think so. Yeah. Come on forward, and we'll have everybody come forward right up front here as we begin, and we join together. I'm going to ask Pastor Chris, uh, would you be willing to offer a prayer of blessing for this time? Yes. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we gather together today with gratitude and joy as we prepare in the sacred journey of baptism. Bless this moment with your divine presence. May the waters of baptism symbolize a profound rebirth in faith. Shower these candidates with your love, grace, and guidance as they embark on this journey, following the teachings of Christ. May this sacred act be a source of strength and a testimony to the boundless love you offer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, let's join together in the liturgy of baptism. And remember, remember folks, that uh, you just... You just get to, I'll give you the answers that are up here, so don't worry about that. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we're initiated into Christ's holy church, and we're incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation, and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. I present Lily Ann Dugan and Olivia Daisy Eggleston for baptism. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, and I'm uh, asking the moms and dads here in particular 
but also I see a couple sponsors up front here today too, and so we'll ask them to answer also. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil power of the world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever form they present themselves? If so, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, say, I do. Will you, Gavin and Amanda, Jake and Jackie, nurture Lily and Olivia in Christ's holy church? That by your teaching and example they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, Confess their faiths openly and to lead a Christian life. If so, say, we will. Do you now, all of you, all y'all, do you, as Christ's body the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Lily and Olivia now before you in your care? With God and we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround each person with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Let's join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scripture of Old and New Testament. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died and was buried. He descended into heaven. On the third day he rose again. He descended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Thanks, Pastor Chris. Uh, so I just want to say real quick before we go to baptism that one of the reasons that we as United Methodists baptize infants is because we believe God is at work in the lives of all people through the cross of Jesus Christ. That grace is present and available for everybody in that way. And so this is just like us shining a flashlight as the church on these beautiful girls and saying, God, we know you're at work here already. And we want to demonstrate our faith in that and acknowledge through your action of baptism that you will be at work in our lives. So we want to celebrate that. So I will start today, since Miss Lily is here and ready, why don't we step right on over here. And Miss Lily, would you like to touch the water? Do you want to touch it and see? There it is. In the Old Testament, the prophet says, I will pour out my spirit on your sons and so in that spirit, we bring Lily and baptize her in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm very confused about why my head is wet now, but it's okay. Yes, amen, amen. Well, let's celebrate that baptism. Praise God. for, for uh, Lily, so now we invite our next customer to come forward. <laughs> Here we have baby Olivia. Can, Jay, can I try and hold her? Is that okay? She looks like she's, she slept all night last night, reports say. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's good. Olivia, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and all God's people said. Amen. Amen. Oh, she just did great. She just did great. 
And everybody celebrates. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you. And you guys, this has a, a present for Olivia also on the, today her, for her baptism. So we're thankful for that. You want to touch it to him? This is just God's flashlight. He says, <coughs> this is our way of saying God's spirit is present. You know, you want to do something? You know, we can all do this at a baptism. We can take the water and we can make the sign of the cross on our forehead and we can remember that you were baptized too when you were little. We can remember. We'll leave the water open today, and when you come forward for communion, if you would like to remember your baptism, just go ahead and dip your finger in the water and make the sign of the cross on your forehead and remember today that you belong to God, and these little girls do too, and all God's people said. Amen. 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 I think with that, Chris, we're going to re re dismiss kids to kids' yes. church, and it's time for a little bit of prayer. So yes. that's it. That's right, Miss Taya is directing the traffic. Wave your hands, that's right, she is headed this way. Well, as we prepare our hearts for prayer, I just want to take one minute to invite us all to a special invitation. Um, I know that personally, my life was impacted when people shared their faith with me. In fact, I'm here today as a candidate for ministry because of someone named Gabriel Benjamin Wickheiser who went out of his way to share his faith. And as we progress into this canvas service, what we're actually trying to do is say, God, use us to help reach others. But I know it's a little terrifying, right? It's scary to share your faith, which is what I want to invite you personally, not just to travel this road without any help, but we're going to have kind of discussions around this and prayers around this and, you know, maybe even a, a discussion group because it is somewhat terrifying to do this, but Christ also asked us to go and make disciples. So more on this to come, but just stay tuned to that. We think that as a community here that can be learning and growing and inspiring, we also have to be outreaching. So with that, Let's go into our time of prayer, praying for God to break through into this church service. Would you please join me as we pray? God, we plead with you to break through into our lives and to do a mighty work among us. Maybe we are here today for the first time and we're here today and we have so many things on our hearts. But Lord, we know that if there's one thing we need, it's you. Lord, we ask you to be with ourselves right now as we head into this holiday season. We ask you to be with our church right now as we try to make a difference for you. Lord, we ask you to be with our nations right now as there's war raging and hostages and all sorts of things going on. Lord, we need you. Lord, we long to bring people into relationship with you. Holy Spirit, we long to have you help us grow deeper in our costly love and to see a wider mercy for the Fort Wayne region than we ever have before. So love us and lead us and direct us and forgive us for how blind we have been to the needs of our neighbors. How silent we have been to the needs of our friends. Lord, in this holiday season, we particularly ask you to help us listen carefully to what it is you're telling us to do. Lord, embolden us to be a witness for you during this time. Please help us to be a faithful and fearless and fruitful community. Lord, we come to you at this moment, acknowledging that there might be several things heavy on our hearts. And at this moment, we'll take a Pause for silence. Just acknowledge these things before you. God, today we surrender our worries to you. We've made our needs known to you. 
We understand that you'll bring your goodness and mercy and your steadfast love and your grace. So, Lord, just help us receive today that peace that passes all understanding. Guard our hearts and our mind with your presence. We ask these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's a real ordeal. Maybe you've experienced it. It all starts with a question, what are we doing for supper? You experience that? Some of you, some of you have been on this journey with a person you love for a long time. Uh, we won't point any fingers here, but some have been on asking that question a long time. Uh, some of you are just starting on that journey. But the question, nonetheless, has been revealed to be a real ordeal. What do you want to do for dinner? You know the response to this. It's different in every couple, isn't it? Some people, the response is... Uh, what? I don't care. I don't care. Hot dog. They're paying attention this morning. Yes. I don't care. I don't know. What do you want? Oh, this is familiar, isn't it? It's a real ordeal. It's a real ordeal as it goes back and forth. And what is revealed is that, uh, well, what if we go to, what if we go to Salsa Grill? That sounds good. Then what's the other person say? I don't like Salsa Grill. I'll go anywhere but Salsa Grill. Oh, okay, what about the Golden Corral? <laughs> oh, not the Golden Corral. <laughs> what's revealed is we want what's not on the menu. We want what we want, and we're not even always sure what we want. It's all unfolding in the conversation. It's a real ordeal, a big ordeal. It's a ruined meal. Even Adam learned this when they went out themselves. And what they found was the only thing they could agree on that they wanted was the one thing not on the menu. And in so doing, they revealed that what we really want is to feed ourselves, to serve ourselves, to find what we want, not for others, not to be there to give. And in their taking, not their giving, it was a big ordeal. It was a ruined meal. It was a ruined meal even many, many centuries later. God's people rose and fell, carried into captivity. The ministry of Jesus happens. He comes, he lives, he teaches, and he gives a meal. He gives a meal and bread and wine for people to share. But we are told in the text of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 17, that people stretch out their hands not for serving others, not for simply sharing in the meal that had been given, but because of what they wanted, and what they wanted often not on the menu. 1 Corinthians 11, beginning at verse 17, the Apostle Paul wrote the church at ancient Corinth saying, now, I don't praise you as I give the following instruction. When you meet together, it does more harm than good. Why would that be? First of all, and there we go. First of all, when you meet together as a church, I hear there are divisions among you, and I partly believe it. Shock of all shocks that as we come together, even for a meal, we might not agree. Verse 19. It's necessary that there are groups among you, so make, to make clear who is genuine. So that when you get together in one place, it is meet to eat the Lord's meal. Each of you goes ahead, and it's like you're eating a private meal. One person goes hungry while another is drunk. Don't you have houses to eat and drink in? Or don't you look down on God's churches and humiliate those who have nothing? What can I say to you? Will I praise you? No, I won't praise you for this. What's revealed is that in the earliest church, when people didn't come together in worship spaces like this or in grand cathedrals, but instead gathered in homes, they ate the meal that Jesus had left on the night in which he was betrayed. But when they did, people came wanting what they want. Some people came hungry. That's hard to imagine in a land of great wealth that people would come hungry and think, I'll eat breakfast here. But it's what they did. It's hard to imagine that people could come. As Methodists, we don't actually have real wine. We have grape juice. 
But in the earliest church, they drank wine from the cup, and people would come and pass that cup and just drink and drink until they were more than a little bit sloppy. That seems to be the suggestion. Isn't that incredible that people come with those kind of desires and those kind of wants and coming to serve themselves rather than to share in a meal that had been shared with them? It's a big ordeal. It's a ruined meal, isn't it, when we come like that? But in the midst of it, heavens reveal. Heavens reveal comes to us in the life of Jesus Christ. He comes fully God and fully man to live among us. He comes to walk with us, to suffer with us, and to show what God's life is, that God's life is not a taking of what we want, but it is a giving, it's a sharing, it's a sacrifice, it's a suffering. He does this unambiguously on the cross, but before he goes to the cross, he gives us a meal to show us that the cross, a place of suffering, a place of self-giving is actually a meal as well. The Apostle Paul talks about this in the same place in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I received a tradition from the Lord which I handed on to you on the night in which he was betrayed. The Lord Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this and remember me. And he did the same thing with the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup of the new covenant is my blood, and every time you drink it, do this to remember me. And every time you drink, eat this bread and drink from this cup, you broadcast the death of the Lord until he comes. It's a big ordeal. It's a ruined meal, but then heaven's revealed. It's a big ordeal and a ruined meal and heaven's re reveal, but it's the real deal, this meal. Again, we know that God's life is sacrifice. God's life is giving love. We see it on the cross, and we have heard it said in John 3.16, that passage we know so well. God loved the world so much. He gave his only son that whoever believes in him won't perish but have eternal life. Heaven is revealed in this one who gives us the meal, but even in the meal. There's a guy by the name of St. John Chrysostom. He lived in the year 450, approximately. He served as bishop of Constantinople, leading worship in the Hagia Sophia, which still stands one of the greatest places of worship in Christian history. And from that place, he reflected on the communion table, reflected on the Eucharist, the Greek word, Eucharisteo, meaning thanksgiving, and he made the following observation of it. He said, oh, what a marvel, what love of God to man. He who sits on high with the Father is at this hour held in the hands of all and gives himself to those who are willing to embrace and grasp him, and this all do through the eyes of faith in other words, what Chrysostom is saying is this meal isn't like the meals we fight over. It's not the meals we serve ourselves over. This is a meal of giving. This is a meal that creates for us a doorway into what's going on in heaven where God's life is a giving. God's life is a sacrifice. And we, think of it, can lay our hand to that, to giving, not a taking, to a serving not simply a wanting. It's a big ordeal. It's a ruined meal. It's heaven's reveal. It's the real deal. A thanksgiving that heals. When we were in Norway, my family and I had the privilege of being able to have a sabbatical. Three months we're in Norway. I have four children. The oldest is now uh, 15. The youngest is nine. She's proud to tell you that by next August, she'll be celebrating double digits. <laughs> when we were in Norway, though, you can imagine the conversations about where we would get dinner. Because, of course, 
uh, they were not accustomed to the classic Norwegian foods, like pizza, and tacos, and hamburgers. Yes, if you go to Norway, that's what you'll see, up and down every street, pizza, tacos, hamburgers, but not like we think. They advertise on the sign, sure, American style. They have inculcated our culture hook, line, and sinker, and they love it. Pizza, tacos, cheeseburgers. But there's an odd seasoning to all of it, a little bit too much paprika, the Norwegians seem to like that seasoning. Maybe a little too much nutmeg in your cheeseburger. It's all just not quite right. It's an approximation that doesn't quite match up. And so there was always a debate about where we would go because though my kids were dying for tacos, for pizza, for cheeseburgers, the kind they wanted was denied them again and again and again. And then one day in church, worshiping with a group of Methodists from around the world, Dr. Andrew Ritania and his wife, Dr. Felicity Ritania, who are natives originally from Kenya, invited us to dinner. They said, Neps, we are going to have you over to eat, and we are going to share with you the foods of our home. Great. <laughs> we were excited. They had us to their little apartment, and we decided we would take our foods as well to share with them. Now note how different this is from how we often approach a meal, not going to what we're looking for, but ready to share something. And when we got to their meal, there the table was full. In the tiny apartment, a table had been set that filled almost the whole room. We lined it with chairs, our six, their four. And we sat down to samosas. We sat down to curries. We sat down to rice. We sat down to not just the flavors of Kenya, but the tastes that had been imparted by the British Empire that were left on their table. And the kids kind of liked some of them. We brought our foods. We brought a plate of brownies. <laughs> and the thing we were most proud of, deviled eggs. <laughs> the food of my people. Can I get an amen? amen. Oh, yeah, deviled eggs. <clears throat> and all of it was shared. And wouldn't you know, the only thing on the table that our friends wouldn't eat were the deviled eggs. <laughs> they looked at that. They said, there's mayonnaise in there? That's disgusting. How can you put that in your body? My kids were delighted, though, because that meant more double eggs for them. And what we found is when we approached the meal, not for what we could take and not for how we could serve ourselves and not for who could pick what, but when we came together, joining in the meal as a giving, as a sacrifice, as something we were wanting to share with someone else more than we were wanting to feed ourselves, what we found is it was a thanksgiving that heals. It's a big ordeal, a ruined meal. Heaven, though, intrudes and reveals the real deal. God's good for the common wheel. It rises up within me with a holy zeal. Oh, it's a love that I long to taste, to touch, to feel. A mercy that causes me to break out in song and in silence kneel. It is a thanksgiving that heals. And I want to be a part of it forever. And so this morning, we recognize that the call of Christ is a call to a meal. It's a call to a giving, to a sharing, that we live out through the commitments we make here, through the ways we commit to serve, the ways we commit to share our story with others, we recognize that the call to Christ is a sharing of God's love in this meal, the real deal, which has a magnetic pull for us all the way to the throne in heaven. Oh, it's a big ordeal. So many ruins. But heaven's been revealed. The real deal. A thanksgiving that will heal. 
And in this church, all people are welcome to it. If you believe Jesus is the Lord of your life, and you have confessed all your big ordeals to him, then all people are welcome at this table. And with that in our mind and heart, Pastor Chris is going to come and assist me, and we're going to turn our hearts to the meal that Jesus gave. As we come to the table, many of us can be reminded <coughs> of our sins, our shortcomings, or not adding up. But as Glenn so illustrated beautifully, it's not about measuring up. It's not about adding up. We don't have to be perfect to come here. Christ comes to us. And so before we take communion today, Many of us just might think to ourselves that we're holding back from being truthful with God. Maybe we're holding back because we've done things that we would not like to have done. Or we've said things that we would rather not have said. The truth of the matter is that God knows this and still loves us and still offers this table for us. So right here, if there have been things that we've done or said, Just know that when we confess them to God, God can forgive us. So know, hear the good news, no matter what you've done, no matter how many times you've done it, if we confess our sins before God, we can be made right with God right here and right now. So in the name of Jesus Christ, our sins can be forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread gave thanks for it. And when he had given thanks for it, he broke it and he said, this is my body, broken for you. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, when the meal was over, Jesus took the cup and he held it high and he said, this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin, as often as you take and drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and in thanksgiving as we remember Christ's offering for us. Let's pray. Oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Make us one, O oh Lord, until Jesus Christ returns in victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet, where all is a giving, a sharing, a thanksgiving, both now and forever, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and all God's people said, Amen and Amen. Pastor Chris and I are going to share this meal as uh, Chelsea brings some music for us, and we just invite you to come forward. If you feel so led, everyone is welcome to come and receive the body and blood of Christ. It is a sharing that begins and continues in heaven. And you may take part today, no matter who you are or where you come from. Come to the
and souls unto everlasting life we take, we eat, we drink, and in our hearts we are truly glad, and all God's people said, Amen. 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 Let's turn our hearts to the closing song this morning, a spirit of thanksgiving, we turn our hearts to song now. There's power in the blood, stand with us in worship.
Spirit.